And what is happening, everybody? Welcome back to Installs Your Sub for another video. Today, we have the next installment in the collection review series. And guys, let me tell you what, this collection is absolutely out of this world. I've been itching to record this for the last month or so. He submitted it a while ago. Uh, my apologies to him for not getting it up sooner, but uh, it's been a little busy lately. So today, guys, we have a collection belonging to the member of the community named Corey. And Corey is the variations guy in the community. A lot of you guys have probably seen his post on the subreddit. Um, I think his subreddit handle is like IcemanC86, uh, just going off memory. It might be uh, slightly different than that. But uh, he posts a lot of his variations and finds on the subreddit. But Corey's level of attention to detail is absolutely out of this world with the variations. We're talking like light red, dark red, metallic red, dark maroon. We're talking like all sorts of different uh, decal colors, decal shades. He's got an unbelievable eye for detail on these variations. And funnily enough, he was one of the first people that I started interacting with frequently back when I first joined the community back in like 2019. Because I, uh, I had posted a picture on the subreddit, I think of like... 17 or 18 different ratifieds that I had and like two or three different RDO sixes. And he had actually sent me the photo in a PM circling two or three of the, uh, the different ratifieds out of like the pile of 15 saying, Hey, can you send me close-ups of these? These variations are slightly different. And I was like, what are you talking about? They're all ratified. They all look the exact same. And, uh, upon closer inspection, you could actually see that some of them had slight decal differences or paint textures. And it was just absolutely out of this world that he had managed to zoom in on that picture and honed in on those details but uh, he was 100% right. They were slightly different ratifieds, but uh, he just, it's unbelievable the amount of dedication he's put into his variation collection. And anytime I come across, you know, something that seems a little bit out of the ordinary or slightly off color, or, you know, a decal that's slightly off center or missing, I typically send it right over to either him or Ryan. Um, they're the guys I always bounce my variations and stuff off of just to see, because chances are they've seen 99% of variations out there. And uh, I don't want to say that anybody has, you know, a complete variation collection because I know there's stuff that probably people haven't even seen yet that's sitting out there somewhere. But uh, as far as a fully extensive variation collection, I think Corey probably has the closest thing to what you could possibly say is a complete variation collection. He has absolutely just tons of great stuff. And just one more note before we jump into this collection. So a lot of the pictures, you know, of his like Rolling Thunder variations, for example, um, he might have, you know, seven or eight different Rolling Thunder variations in the photo that are all, you know, loose mint cars. and. Uh, he did send me a list of what all the different variations are, but I'm not gonna go through and try to point out which one is which on the photo, just because that would be pretty time intensive and I don't want to uh, accidentally call a variation the wrong one, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna show you guys the picture of all the different variations, and then I'm gonna show you a screenshot of the little document that he sent me with the breakdown of what the variations are. And uh, just for any of you guys that are trying to, you know, increase your variation knowledge or collection, or you wanna sort of match up which ones are what you should be looking for, you know, that way you can do it because I don't want to misclassify anything in his collection. But if any of you guys have any questions for him, be sure to drop them down in the comments. I'm sure he will check them out and try to get back to as many as he can. But I know he's also super busy, so it might take him a little while. But uh, anyways, guys, let's go ahead and jump into Corey's collection. All right, guys. So first things first, we have a little bit of an overview video where he's going to walk us through his giant display case. It is actually a really cool display case. Love the lighting on it. But just check out all these shelves of cars, variations, guys, and all of these cars. If he's got more than one of a model, they are variations, which is absolutely wicked. Here's the bottom shelf here. We've got some Gen 2 cars, Sweeper, Swamp Beast, just all sorts of accelerators, goodies. Don't worry, guys. We are going to go through every single item in this case. There's so much to talk about here. And I did not realize when I was putting this video together, guys, but this is going to be one heck of a long video. So just sit back and enjoy. Look at the shine on these cars, guys. And look at that. I know you guys see those multiple chicanes, multiple power rages. We've got multiple reverbs. We have all sorts of great customs. Look at all those battle specs. There's so much good stuff in here, guys, that we are going to get to go through. There's some Zamac cars, Highway 35s. We got more customs. See that greased lightning up there on top of the Road Beast case. We've got some Z36s. Let us go ahead and jump right into this collection, guys. All right, so first things first, here's a full-on case display photo. It might be a little hard to see just because, you know, the vertical case and the horizontal video, but uh, check out this display, guys. I love the fact that he's got it all in one big cabinet that you can just open up and move stuff around. That is a great way to display this stuff. And also, it's an underrated touch that the lighting can change in there as well. So this is this Highway 35 shelf. we got the Z36s up front and center. And don't worry, guys, we're going to go through all this stuff. We're just sort of doing a brief view of every single shelf in the case. And then next up, we have the Teku and Metal Maniac shelf. And the little kid in me is just screaming and jumping for joy right now, guys. Look at all those loose Acceleracers cars. 
And then we have the silencers, drones, and acceleron shelf. So there seems to be a lot less variations with the silencers and the drones other than RDO6, of course, which is like the king of variations. Then the Tecmo Metal Maniac. So he was able to fit them all on the same shelf. And we have a prototype anthracite down front and center, guys. This is going to be so much fun. And then on the bottom shelf, we have accessories, videos, and other accelerators for stuff. We've got a little Swamp Beast down front and center, and we got a sweeper behind it, a couple carded items. All right, guys, let's start this breakdown. All right, so we're going to start off with Highway 35. So first up, we have the Wave Ripper set, which is a full set of all the Wave Rippers cars, including a Zamac Dior and some other Diors as well. Let's take a closer look at them. So these are the four Diors that are featuring Highway 35 branding from left to right. We have the Hall of Fame one with the surfboard logos. Then we have the Toy Fair one. That's the one that's absolutely beautiful. I believe that is the same one that we gave away for the 1000 subscriber giveaway. Then we have the RLC Zamax set one and then the original one from the Highway 35 line. So cool to see a Toy Fair Dior loose. I never thought I'd see that. And then we have a full set of the street breed cars from Highway 35, including the gold slingshot as well as a regular slingshot. Then we have the Zamax slingshot, nice front and center. And uh, it feels a little disrespectful to have side draft and arrow flash back towards the back, but slingshot is the premium car. And then we have a full set of the Highway 35 Road Beasts cars, as you can see in the back, some of my favorites like Power Rocket and Vulture. We have the Zamac Ballistic front and center. And of course, we got a gold ballistic and a regular ballistic. Pretty cool that he's got the gold variations of a bunch of those. And then we have an interesting tidbit here. There are a handful of relatively unknown variations in Highway 35, he said, which all affect early release cars. One such variation is the CM5 chrome lip thickness variation. He's only found it on power pistons and backdraft to date, and it only seems to be on their medium size rear wheels. So as you can see in this photo, it's kind of hard to tell, but top cars definitely have a thicker chrome lip than the bottom ones, which is very interesting. So it looks like the ones on the bottom have thinner chrome lips. And then we have a full set of the Dune Rats cars from Highway 35, including both Crazy 8s up front and center right next to Wild Thing. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, the uh, Zamat cars actually are pretty darn sick to see loose. They actually look pretty cool. And they even sort of stand up next to the regular Highway 35 cars. And then we've got a full set of the Scorchers cars, including the Zamac Roadrunner front and center right next to the gold and regular Roadrunner. And he said the Roadrunner is actually the king of Highway 35 variations. There's a whole bunch of different decal variations and even a wheel variation. But uh, let's take a closer look at them. So here to take a closer look at the variation, we have four different Roadrunners, and this is verbatim from him in the note that he gave me. It said that, as you can see here, the decals were changed during production with a different red-yellow gradient behind the Scorcher's name on the trunk, and you can kind of see the different colors on that Scorcher's logo there. There's other subtle variations across the car supporting that it was a full-body decal remodeling. His speculation is that the vertical gradient is the earlier release since it features rough and jarring decal application lines. However, Corey says the same variation can also be found on the Gold Wheel DVD 2-pack version, which was released around the third wave of cars. And I'm not going to lie, guys, that just shows the level of detail that these guys have in this community because uh, that's something that I probably never, ever would have noticed in a million years, even if I had a thousand Roadrunners. But uh, you can definitely clearly see the differences when you look at it up close. And then another subtle wheel variation, this one affects the Roadrunner as well as the Pontiac Rages from the Street Breed team, are chrome versus dull CM5 wheels. So he speculates that another early production choice that was changed due to poor outcome. So the top cars in this photo have the chrome wheels and then the bottom ones are the dull CM5 wheels. And that is very interesting. Once again, I never would have noticed that if he hadn't pointed it out. And then next up, we have a complete set of the Atomics Highway 35 cars, including the color variations on the Dune Rat So Fast and decal variations for the Street Breed Power Pipes. There's also several no logo members that you can see here, um, just cars that don't have any of the decals. And he said the reasoning behind these no logo cars, they were Hot Wheels mainline promotional pack-ins, but uh, the secret was that they were all denied a roof decal pass on the production line. And also notable here is the two bouncy balls, which are called Hot Wheels Power Balls, which both feature Road Beast Vultures in the core. And that's something I have never seen before. That is absolutely wicked. And the cool thing is the orange one, which actually appears to be Power Balls exclusive, because uh, I don't think there was a Atomics car that was an orange vulture like that. So you might have only been able to get it in the Power Ball. And next up, we have a full set of the Highway 35 track set and promotional cars, including some of my favorites, which were the track set power pipes and the track set aero flash. I'm a big fan of both of those. And he also has two of the track set muscle tones because you guessed it, it is a variation. So as you can see, when it's up close and personal, the muscle tone on the left actually has a larger painted black grill that extends sort of up onto the hood of the car a bit, if you will. It, uh, the black paint definitely goes higher on that one than it does on the right one. 
And this next variation is an absolute treat. So this is the Brock's Fruit Snacks Zotic promotional car. The left is what the standard mail-in promotional for Brock's would have looked like. You can got it for buying three boxes of fruit snacks back in the day or something like that. And you got the car, which is still a pretty cool paint job. And then on the right is the much, much, much rarer inbox promotional with ghost decals. That was only found in select boxes. There's no details on how rare it is exactly, but he said they only pop up for sale every couple of years on eBay. And I'm not going to lie, guys, that ghost decals car is absolutely wicked. I think I'm going to have to start a petition for some of the customizers in the community to make us some ghost decal cars. It kind of looks like strip metal style, but I love that you can still see all the original decals on it. Kind of just reminds me of like a ghost rare from Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a pretty wicked paint job. And next up, we have a bunch of McDonald's Highway 35 cars, which once again, I didn't know existed until recently. You know, a couple months ago, I think I realized that uh, they had Highway 35 ones that came through McDonald's as well as the Accelerators ones. But anyways, I digress. So the front five are the North American releases, but the back four are something a little bit special. So the two models on the back left with the black wheels and slightly altered decals are the European models, which had to be changed to meet certain EU toy laws and copyright laws. So unpictured here are the Scorchers Mitsubishi Eclipse and the Street Breed Street Truck, which also feature black wheels and slightly altered decals. Sadly, in the EU, Dune Rats did not get a counterpart Innervator model for uncertain reasons. And then the two on the left are hyper rare Latin America release models. The McLaren race car, which is sadly missing all the decals, belongs to the Dune Rats. And the Riley Scott special is the street breed car. For Latin America, the Wave Rippers model is a blue double cross on um, the Black Road Beasts car, while the Scorchers car stays the Mitsubishi Eclipse with a third set of different decals, he says. There's no word on what the Road Beast car is for this region still, and if it even exists, similar to Europe. This is absolutely fantastic information. Once again, stuff that I am blown away that these people know. Like seriously, once you guys start talking about, you know, region specific cars from other countries, my head just starts spinning. There's all sorts of crazy knowledge out there. But uh, moving on, these are the promotional image cars. So he said, anyone who grew up with the series might remember that the product packaging often used filler cars on the box art due to early production and series development. These are all cars used as placeholders on track set boxes in the comic books, etc. Still pretty cool. All right, guys. So next up, we are moving on to Highway 35 video game customs, guys. Check out this spread of customs. And he said, no, these are not Randy's. These are ones that he has made himself. So he has also made a full set of video game customs just like Randy has. So pretty cool. That there's a lot of people out there who can make these now. It's really wicked. But just check out the detail on these cars, guys. But he did say, just like Randy, he strove for as game accurate as he could possibly make them with the original CM5 wheels and some little tidbits on them before we get too uh, in-depth on them. He said his first model that he did was so fast. The last one was the Silhouette 2. He said the hardest one to make was the Maelstrom due to the way the decals wrapped on the body. His personal favorite is the Greased Lightning and his least favorite is the No Matter What and I can kind of agree with that one there. He said most of the parts were sourced from specific model releases but some had to be custom made using plastic dyes such as No Matter What's windows and transparent water slides like seared tuners windows. He said the funny looking overboard 454 is the 2005 torpedoed release. And he said he does occasionally take commissions for some of these video game cars and you can probably see them on eBay here and there. But uh, he said that is currently on hold right now for med school. He is an absolute go getter. So just to take a closer look at a bunch of these cars, I know you've seen a couple of them before on some of Randy's custom review videos, but since these are made by Corey himself, there's probably some slight differences. So we'll just take a closer look at them. So we have here, starting on the left, we have no matter what, then we have the golden arrow and the 40 something from the wave rippers team. And next up we have starting on the left, the hot wheels prototype 12. Then we have the grease lightning in the middle, which he said was his favorite. And I've got to agree to an extent guys, that is an absolutely beautiful car. And I love the unique design model on it. It just looks like it was built for speed. And then the one on the far right is pony up and moving on to some street breed cars. We of course have the gorgeous MST Suzuka. Then in the top left, we have the seared tuner, then super tuned and Jester down in the bottom right. And then next up, we have a pair of Scorchers Overboard 454s. And as you can see, the sort of funny looking one, the skinny one on the right or on the left, excuse me, is the 2005 torpedoed release. Still pretty cool to see the decals on the car, though. And then next up, we have one of my favorites, the Scorchers Roger Dodger. We have the old casting and then the retool. He made a custom out of both of them, which is pretty cool. Love that paint job. And then next up, we have some more Scorchers. Love, guys, some of the best models in this line. We have the Silhouette 2. We've got the Scorchers So Fast in the back and the Scorchers Maelstrom, which is definitely one of the prettiest cars I've ever seen made down in the bottom right. And then, of course, the collection wouldn't be complete without some Smash Mouth customs as well. He has done it all. And once again, amazing work to make a full set of these cars. I'm sure it is quite the undertaking as far as, you know, just time and effort and money, too, to get the, uh, the wheels for a lot of these cars. But uh, he did an absolutely fantastic job. 
And then continuing on the customs path, we have a Movie Z and Clip Cars as well. These were made to replicate the car scene in the final part of the Highway 35 movies. And then of course, Corey also has a trio of Z36 with different window variations. Um, these custom Zs were all made to represent different versions seen in the franchise. So the green one goes with the RLC box set Z36. The orange one is from the episode three video cover art. And the gray one is the Z36 as frequently seen in the comic books. What a great idea. And there is the Z36s with the respective parts that they come from. As you can see, we got the gray one with the comic and then the orange one from the episode three video cover art. And then guys, speaking of undertakings, this is a full set of Highway 35 cars that are wheel swapped to match their appearances in the movies. So these are all movie accurate Highway 35 cars. In addition to the uh, the full set of cars that he has in his collection, these are all wheel swapped ones. So he technically has two sets of the Highway 35 cars. And he did say for you guys not to panic, a lot of these wheel swap cars were from his childhood collection that had a slight wheel blemishes or other issues already on them. They weren't like he bought a full mint set of cars and destroyed them. He, uh, he wheel swapped ones that were in used condition. He said, uh, except some side draft models, which actually were mint models that he purchased just to destroy. Cue the evil laugh there. No, we're just kidding. But uh, definitely an absolutely wicked piece to have to any collection. That's something I wouldn't even dream of attempting. But it is definitely a great addition to any collection. Uh, it's just an awesome idea. I never would have thought to do that, but definitely pretty darn cool. And he said uh, several of the cars do feature other slight movie changes like a chrome base on the Scorchers Corvette, a black base on 24-7, and a chrome base on the El Camino from the Dune Rats team. And he said, not to worry, guys, nothing went to waste. The missing wheels, they were used for the customs that he did above, which is actually pretty cool. So he sort of sourced wheels for his customs from authentic cars that were in used condition. So nothing went to waste. And then we have a whole bunch of Accelerators Customs. All the customs as seen on screen were made by a friend of his before he got into the customs game. The five original models are models of his own. So we have the Ballistic, the Switchback, Side Draft, and we have the Infirmary Nomad, Teku Dior 2, Teku Slingshot. Um, I think that's a Rome card. Then we have the Droned Crazy 8s. It looks like a Metal Maniacs Corvette Stingray, which is actually a pretty unique paint job for the ones that I've seen so far. And then a Metal Maniacs Roadrunner. And just taking a closer look here, I can never get enough of these silencers customs, guys. The ballistic side draft and switchback, that silencer side draft is absolutely a work of art. And then we have the drone Crazy 8s and the Metal Maniacs Corvette Stingray. And I'm not going to lie, guys, that orange paint job on the Corvette Stingray is absolutely wicked. I know we've seen a, a, a white version, and I think we've seen a gray version from uh, Randy and Acceleron Customs. Or maybe it was... It might have been Tyler that made the white Corvette Stingray. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the orange is definitely a paint scheme that we haven't seen before, and it looks pretty sweet. All right, now we are moving on to the Accelerations variations, guys. And while you're looking at this beautiful picture with the chicane, spec tights, strip metal power rages, we're going to go through a disclaimer that he left me. So it says here about Accelerations variations. There are a ton. He could talk about them all day, but he doesn't got to have all day. We'll try to keep it simple and not explain in detail. Decal variations will just be called that. He's not going to say exactly what the variation is exactly. Um, you guys will just have to look. Other variations will be explained the first time they come up in the order he's provided and just referenced later. But unique variations will be shown off. Some variations are exclusive to the factory sealed set that was one of 500 and they will be noted. So variations are going to be covered from top to bottom or from left to right. And after each sort of little section of cars, I will try to post a little breakdown that he left me in the notes. I'm going to post it after the photo. So that way, if you guys want to go through and try to match up which variation goes to um, which line, you'll be able to do so. But without further ado, let us sink our teeth in. So starting out with the Power Rages and moving down, we have the base version Power Rage, a decal variation that came from the 10500 factory sealed set. Then we have one with the rear window decals. And then, of course, the Beauty, the strip metal Power Rage from 2006. Moving over to Spectite, we have the base version. Then we have the 2006 Cosmic Realm version. Then a 2009 Trick Tracks 5-pack one that uses the same Realm decals. And a 2018 Mystery Models one that uses, again, the same Realm decals. And then over to the chicanes, guys, and there's just something about seeing three chicanes, well, four if you include the, uh, the team colors one, just absolutely beautiful. So on top, we have the light blue chicane. Then we have the painted base chicane, which came from a factory sealed set. There will be a follow-up photo here in a second. Then we have the dark blue chicane, and uh, it's just amazing to be able to have three chicanes. That blows me away. And then a 2006 team colors one down in the bottom. And here is the follow-up photo of the chicanes. So we have the two light blue ones over on the left. Um, the one on the far left is the you know, just general 2005 one. And then the one in the middle is from the factory sealed set and several factory sealed set cars actually do have painted bases, which is fascinating. And once again, I would never have known that something like that even existed. So kudos to him for noticing that sort of stuff. 
And then we have a close up of the Power Rage. This is the Power Rage decal variation. You can take a close look and see the difference. And moving on to Synchro, Drift Tech, and Reverb. So starting out with the Synchros and moving down, we have the McDonald's North American Synchro. Then we have the European McDonald's Synchro. There are some slight differences there. Then we have the 2006 Team Colors one, the 2005 Card Game Bundle one, the one that came with the trading card game. And interestingly enough, as of the time of recording this, I haven't had a chance to get back to Corey, but uh, someone just sent me a photo of two different starter set Synchros that had a variation on the back window decals. They actually had the Hot Wheels logo flipped around. But that just goes once again to show how many discrepancies and variations are out there with these cars. So continuing on in the middle column, we have the bright plastic orange synchro. Then we have a metallic orange synchro with an orange spoiler. Then we have the metallic orange with the black spoiler and then the dark metallic orange with the black spoiler. And I think I actually sent him a couple of those. He bought them off of me because I noticed that they were slightly off colored in the, uh, the paint scheme. And then moving on over to the Drift Techs, we have the metallic blue with an orange spoiler, a metallic blue with a blue spoiler, and then a bright plastic blue, which he said possibly could be an EU regional variation. And I will have to say that I have never seen one of those in person before, and I've gone through a lot of Drift Techs, so he's probably right that it is a regional variation. Uh, it's definitely not super common. And then, of course, the reverbs on top, we have the dark metallic blue and then the light metallic blue reverb. And then as promised, guys, here is a screenshot of the little list breakdown that he sent me for these cars that I was going through. Um, feel free to pause the video if you want to sort of, you know, compare the variations and look a little closely at them. And here are the last two of the synchro ones, then the Drift Tech and the Reverb. And I can say, even though all the synchros may look pretty similar through, you know, YouTube's quality and um, just being a little bit zoomed out on the photo, uh, I can 100% assure you they are 100% different colors because, like I said, a couple of the synchros I had myself and uh, I definitely noticed a noticeable difference. And bam, look at all these high voltages. So first things first, in the top left, we have the base version high voltage. Then we have the Duracell European promotional high voltage, which is pretty heavily sought after. Then we have two team colors high voltages. The one in the top, as you can see, it was kind of that split, uh, split color variation where the roof of the car did not really match the rest of the car. And then the bottom one, which is the full sort of bland orange one. But uh, then moving into the middle row, we have the color shifters hot high voltage, which reuses the side decal, and then the color shifters cold um, high voltage, which also reuses the side decal, and then the multi-pack exclusive one that also, again, has the same side decal. So pretty cool to see those decals continue to pop up. And then moving on to the baselines at the bottom of the middle column, we have the base version. Then in the top right, we have a decal variation that is from the factory sealed set. Then below that, we have the 2006 re-release version that has the light blue windows. And then under that, we have the North American McDonald's version baseline and the European McDonald's version baseline. And here's a little checklist for you guys with the high voltage and the baseline. And obviously there is a baseline variation out there that a lot of you guys know of with the, uh, the clear wheels 2006 baseline that has the light blue windows, which is also mega rare. And then here's a photo of the two McDonald's bases um, from the European one and the North American one. As you can see, they do have some different features on the bottom, which is why they are notable. And then moving on to battle spec. And this is a car that I really didn't realize had variations. I've never had more than, you know, two or three battle specs on hand at a time, but uh, pretty cool to see that they've got variations. So starting over on the left, we have a neutral plastic blue. Then we have a neutral metallic blue, then a light metallic blue from the factory sealed set in the middle. Then there is a dark metallic blue and then the 2006 Excel charged version battle spec. And then here is the little battle spec checklist. Feel free to go through and zoom in on the uh, video to sort of notice the differences in between them. And then we move on to the Metal Maniacs, guys, and just look at all of these different Rolling Thunders. The Metal Maniacs have a ton of variations. So starting off on the top left, we have Light Maroon CM5. Then under that, we have two wheel variations. One has, or they're both split wheel variations. One has a CM6 on the front, one has CM6 on the back. As you can see, it's a CM6, CM5 split. He actually bought both of those from me. Pretty cool little variation there. Then under that, we have the Dark Maroon CM5. Moving to the middle, we have Dark Maroon CM6, Light Maroon CM6, then Light metallic pink maroon cm6 which was from the factory sealed set then under that we have a light metallic maroon cm6 then a dark maroon with over chrome cm6 wheels up in the top right corner and that one's actually a pretty cool little variation i kind of wish they had done over chrome wheels for all the cars it looks really sick then under that we have three of the 2016 colors versions so the first one has solid gray wheels then the one in the middle has the split wheels as you can see you can see the spokes on the front wheel you can't see them on the back because they are clear and then down in the bottom, we had the 2016 colors one with 
full transparent gray wheels or clear wheels, whatever you want to call it. So pretty cool that there are split wheel variations with uh, the 2005 and the 2006 cars. And here, of course, is the full checklist of all the different Rolling Thunder variations. There is just an absolute ton. And then moving on to Power Bomb, Spine Buster, and Flathead Fury. So starting off with the Power Bombs, there is a narrow frame with CM5 wheels Power Bomb. Then we have a wide frame with CM5s. Then we have the narrow frame with CM6s and the wide frame with CM6. There'll be a follow-up picture here in a second to show the differences between the frames. But it's actually a really cool, unique little variation that, uh, once again, probably never would have noticed if Corey hadn't messaged me about it. And then moving down to the spine buster. So we have a satin engine with CM5s. We have a satin engine with CM6s. Then we have a chrome engine with CM5s and a chrome engine with CM6s. And then the purple variation spine buster, of course, that does not have any variations. Just uh, they were all identical. And then Flathead Fury had no variations. You can see it there, the second from the bottom on the far right column. And I kind of skipped around on this one, sorry guys. But uh, then the 2006 Power Bombs, the red ones up in the top right. Um, the top one has the regular solid wheels. And then the bottom one has the transparent gray wheels or clear wheels variation. And then here we have the little checklist for Power Bomb, Spine Buster, Flathead Fury. And now let's take a closer look at the frames on the Power Bombs. So this is really, really cool here. I never would have noticed this, but if you look closely at the power bomb, you can see on the one on the right, down in the front, in between the wheels, they sort of, I don't know what you call that, a rivet, the little black piece that's uh, on either side of the black stripe down the direct middle of the car. As you can see, it kind of opens up and then goes right down into the wheel well. But on the left one, there's actually another piece of plastic on the other side of that rivet that is painted black and there's, you can even see a little white in it. But uh, that's like it has an extra piece on the frame, which is pretty cool. So there's a distinct variation there. So moving on to ratified pile driver and jackhammer, there is a bunch of ratified variations as well. So starting off in the top left, we have the light brown CM5. Then we have the dark brown CM5. That's right there, 100% shade variation. Seeing that one firsthand as well, definitely pretty cool. Then underneath that, we have the dark brown CM6 and then the light brown CM6. And then there is a CM5 with the light brown paint and wheel variation in the middle row in the top. And uh, that one's actually pretty neat as well. So we're going to segue here to these ratified. So as you can see, there is a paint difference. You kind of might have to pull your head a little far away from your phone so you can kind of see them from a distance to sort of see the paint variation. But the one on the left is definitely a dark brown ratified. And then the two on the right are light brown. But if you look closely at the wheels, the front wheels on the far right one, they are solid black wheels, whereas normally they're kind of opaque and you can see the inside of the wheel. They are solid black, which is an interesting little wheel variation there. But now back to this main image on the pile drivers, there is the 2005 base variation, which has no variation. And then there is a 2006 Excel charged version that uh, does not have any variations either. And then moving over to the jackhammer variations, which have a bunch of paint variations. So starting in the top, this one has smooth decals with an unpainted door trim. It's from the factory sealed set. Then there's one with smooth decals, then one with rough decals with red decal paint and another one with rough decals with pink decal paint. And if you look really closely, you can actually see the different highlighting on the decals. Pretty sweet, great eye to notice those. And then on the 2006 Realm Series Jackhammer, of course, we have the wheel variation once again with the clear wheels one on the left and the solid wheels one on the right. And before we get over to the little checklist for this section, we have a whole bunch of hollow backs to go through, guys. Check out all these hollow backs. So we're gonna start over on the top left and work our way down. We have the dull plastic maroon with silver decals. Then there's a dull plastic maroon with white decals below it. Then the one on the bottom is a satin CM5 with solid black wheels, sort of like that. Uh, the front one's on that ratified. Then in the middle column, we have a satin CM5 with transparent black wheels. Underneath that, we have the satin CM5 decal variation with silver decals. The ones above are gray. Then under that, we have the satin CM6 with gray decals, and then the satin CM6 with silver decals. There's all sorts of different decal stuff going on here. It makes my head spin. And then moving over to the far left column, or the far right column, we have the Toy Fair model on top, once again, liberated from its little acrylic case. And then underneath that, we had the McDonald's North American one, the McDonald's European one, and then the 2017 Mystery Models one. And then here we have the checklist. The only one that's not showing on here is that top ratified variation, which was a light brown CM5. That's the only one that's not showing in this image. But there's just a ton of decal variations on jackhammer, hollowback, riveted, etc. There's just a bunch of them. And uh, it makes it even more complicated when they have the CM5, CM6 variants. And then they have the body variants like satin uh, hollowbacks and the plastic looking ones. And I think riveted has a plastic looking variation too. It just makes for a ton of different combinations. And speaking of riveted and variations, guys, here we go. Let's jump right into it. So starting in the top left and working our way down, 
We have a plastic orange CM6, a plastic orange CM5, a metallic orange CM5 with rough decals and a solid black wheels. Then below that we have metallic orange CM5 with solid black wheels. I tell you what guys, this is like the ultimate tongue twister reading through these different variations. So going to the middle column on top, we have a metallic orange CM5 with transparent black wheels. Then under that we have a metallic orange CM6. Then we have a metallic orange CM6 with decal variation from the factory set. And then in the bottom, it looks like it is a CM6 black hood riveted. And then moving on over to the far right. On top, we have the 2006 strip metal version and then the McDonald's North America version. There was no European version riveted. And then of course, down in the bottom right, we have two Airy 8s, the 2005 first editions, both colors with the pork chop influenced riders from the Hot Wheels City Motorcycle Riders series. And here we have a close up of those riveted wheel variations. As you can see, we have sort of opaque wheels on the left that you can see through. And then on the right, we have solid black wheels. And then here is your riveted cheat sheet with all the different riveted variations here. And I'm not going to lie. I think he had 10 riveted in that photo in total, and there's only nine listed here. So I think the bottom middle one um, was not listed on that sheet, but I'm pretty sure it was just a black hood variation uh, riveted. I'm not 100% sure. He might have to correct me down in the comments. And then he even has three Metal Maniacs from the Larry Wood collection. We have two Rolling Thunders here and a Jackhammer. Definitely really sweet additions. And we are now moving on to the silencers and the racing drones, which fortunately, other than RDO 6, have a lot less variations to keep track of when compared to like Metal Maniacs and Teku. So starting off here in the top left, we have RDO 1s. So the top two, the first one is a wedgeless variation RDO 1, which we'll take a closer look at here in a second. And then the bottom or the one below it is the base version. And then the one below that is a painted base variation, which is from the factory sealed set, similar to that chicane. And here is a close up of that wedge variation. He's not sure if it's an international variation or not, but as you can see right, uh, right in front of that back wheel, you can see right where that first racing drones decal is, there's an extra piece that the bottom one has that the top one does not have, which is a uh, very interesting. Once again, crazy eye for detail to notice that. So moving on here, Underneath the RDO ones, we have a base version RDO two, and then in the top of the middle column, we have a 2006 stripped metal RDO two, which is definitely one of my favorite models. And then moving on to the RDO three, so everybody probably knows there was a silver version and a black version, but uh, starting off with the middle column on the top of the RDO threes, we have a glossy black version. Then underneath that, we have a glossy black version that has a painted base from the factory sealed set, and then under that is a matte black RDO three, which I have actually never seen in person. That is pretty cool. And in that far right column, starting out on the top, we have the silver version RDO3. And then beneath that, we have the Duracell European promotional RDO3. Once again, in pretty high demand, just like that Duracell high voltage. And then underneath that, we have the RDO4. So we have the base version, which has no variations. And then the McDonald's version that was released in North America. It has no European version. And then continuing on, we have the 2016 colors RDO4 in the top left of the far left column while wow, it's a mouthful and then moving on to the rdo5 so we have the base version of rdo5 then we have the 2009 to 2011 truck and transporters rdo5 that has light green wheels then we have the truck and transporters one with green wheels beneath that so moving on to the middle column we have the 2006 realm series rdo5 with the solid gray wheels and then beneath that we have the 2006 Realm Series one that has the transparent gray wheels or clear wheels as some people call them. And then guys, we're moving on to the RDO 6s and man, there are a bunch of RDO 6 variations. So first RDO 6 variation, starting out in that middle column, we have a dark green CM5 RDO 6. Then underneath that, we have one with the split wheel variation. So it has CM5 and CM6 wheels. Then jumping over to that right column. On top, we have a dark green CM6. Then underneath that, we have a light green CM6. Then underneath that one, the second one from the bottom, we have a matte black one with dark green CM6 wheels and a galvanized base. And then the one underneath that, the last one is a matte black with dark green CM6s and a black base. So real quick, before we get to the last couple RDO 6s, here is your checklist for the RDO 1 through RDO 5. So then continuing on with the RDO 6s, we are nowhere near done. As you can see in that far left column, um, I don't know which variation that one on the top is. I couldn't quite match it up with the checklist, but uh, underneath that we have two McDonald's version RDO 6s. One is the North American version, and then one is the European version. And then underneath that we have the Chrome RDO 6, which is from, I think it was released with the Speed of Silence, I wanna say. It was released with one of the movies. And then moving back to the middle row, 
So here we have the two 2006 matte black re-release RDO 6s with the light green wheels. So the difference between these two actually is kind of interesting. The top one has large front wheels and the bottom one has small front wheels. You can actually pretty clearly see it in the photo that the top one has larger front wheels. It's kind of an interesting variation or error there, if you will. And then underneath those two, we have the 2006 Realm Series RDO 6, which was the Storm Realm version, I believe. And uh, the top one had the solid gray wheels and the bottom one had the clear wheels. And then here's a closer look at these matte black RDO 6s, guys. So uh, as you know, almost like probably what, 90%, 95% of RDO 6s are that sort of gloss black paint. So to see matte black ones is pretty darn cool, especially with different wheel variations on top of that. But uh, what's interesting here is the second one from the left is actually the only one, I believe, that actually has a matte front uh, fender or spoiler. I don't know what you call it. The front piece on the car is actually matte, too. And here's another close-up of those RDO 6s on the bottom. As you can see, they all vary just slightly. Um, pretty cool here to see the differences between all these different RDO 6s. And once again, just an uh, amazing attention to detail by Corey to notice these. And I think the one that's second from the left, the one that had the matte uh, front piece as well, that was one that I actually found. I pulled out of a blister and he thought it was a Gen 2 one originally. And I was like, nah, man, I promise it's Gen 1. I opened it out of a Gen 1 blister. And to this day, that's the only one of those that I've ever seen. So it's definitely a pretty unique one. And then here, guys, is your checklist for the RDO 6s. And I think there may have been one of these that was not, or there was like an extra one in the photo of the RDO 6s that was not listed in this um, little checklist here. So there might be one that is not accounted for. And then to finally wrap up this drones section, um, we have the RDO 8s over on the far right column. So in the top, we have the base version. Then we have a painted silver base version, which came once again from the factory sealed set. Then underneath that, we have the two 2006 Excel charged versions. One has solid gray wheels and one has the clear wheels. And moving on to the factory sealed set painted bases. I know I've mentioned this a couple different times as we've gone through some of the different photos, but this is what the painted base looks like on all these cars. It's kind of interesting that three of the drone cars had the painted base, but uh, only one of the Teku cars. And then moving on to RDO 9, we are almost done, guys. So in the top left, we have the base version RDO 9. Below that, we have the Team Colors 2006 version with the transparent gray wheels. And then below that, we have the 2006 Team Colors one with split gray wheels. As you can see, the uh, the one in the back is the clear and the one in the front is solid. And there's actually a version of this 2006 RDO 9 that has no side decals as well, which he also owns. But uh, dropping down now, but dropping down to that Drone Flight Fury, there are a bunch of cars that do not have any known variations as of the time this video is coming out so we have the drone flight fury then in the middle column we have the acceleron spine buster then the acceleron spine buster that has the 2008 track set exclusive decal re-release in red below it then rd10 then the drone series cars which would be your drone with creamer nitrium ratified none of those have any variations and then the acceleron shredster does have the wheel variation as you can see up in that top right corner so moving on to the silencers, guys, we have all sorts of good stuff here and uh, something, you know, you learn something new every day. I had no idea that there were two variations on the CM5 Nitrium that is mega rare. So in that top left corner, we have a metallic gray CM5 Nitrium, which is incredibly hyper uber rare, according to Corey. And I 100% believe him because it's hard enough to find a CM5 Nitrium, let alone a... Uh, a paint variation on it. So the top one is the metallic gray CM5 and then below that is the glossy gray CM5. So dropping down to Excellium Anthracite, there are no variations. And then there is the 2006 um, Excel Charge version Anthracite. But then moving on to the right column, we have a carbide. And then the 2006 version carbide actually does have a paint variation. There is a light purple and a dark purple version of the carbide. And it is definitely one of the sickest looking cars in the Gen 2 line. And then here's you guys' checklist for the Nitrium Carbide and Iridium. So then moving on here to the Iridiums, obviously we have the CM5 Iridium in the top left. Then below that we have the CM6 Iridium, and then we have two McDonald's version Iridiums. And then over in the middle column, we have the 2006 Strip Metal version Iridium, which is definitely a pretty sick car, but there's actually a no fender logo on one of them, which is pretty cool. And the rest of these cars do not have any variations as far as Cub Light, Acceleron Cub Light, Acceleron Hollowback, Acceleron Sinistra, Octanium, and Technetium, only one variation or only one kind. And here's a close-up of that Strip Metal Iridium variation. As you can see, there's a Silencer's logo on one of the back corners of the one on the left and the one on the right has no sticker. And moving on to some other Acceleracer stuff, he has Hyperpods, Acceleracer's card game, all sorts of goodies. So first up here, we have the Deluxe Hyperpods. They were all purchased in 2005 and they all still work. And then moving on to the Hyperpods and Transporters. And he said, you notice the variation between the dual driller Hyperpods, you can see on the drill in front, one is sort of like an orangish drill and the other one's more of like a maroon, which is uh, pretty cool. He said one came with the Acceleron Shredster 
and one is the one that came with the power bomb so it's kind of interesting that the ones that had different cars had sort of different colored drills but uh, then in the back obviously slam ram carpoon and the truck and transporter that came with the rdo5 and then moving on to some accelerators tcg love corey actually has a full set of the realm and Accelercharger charger cards with the foils pulled out for visual and uh these 3d foils the light speed card the phantom form and the metro realm card all came from that uncut sheet of 3d foils that i was commissioned to get cut and sold a while ago so pretty cool that three of them found such a great home to a collector but uh, definitely no small feat at all to have a full set of realm and Accelercharger charger cards they're definitely some of the higher demand cards and of course, Corey does not just collect Highway 35 and Accelerators, he has a bunch of other Hot Wheels as well. So he's got two giant 56 car display cases that sit over his work slash study desk and they feature some of his favorite premium castings like Lamborghinis, Toyota Supras, so on and so forth. And here's a shot of his other display case and uh, definitely something pretty to have on the wall while you study. And then here is his anthracite collection, guys. So he has a full set of anthracites. I believe this is every anthracite casting that was ever made. And some of these are mega, mega rare. So in the front and center, we have the authentic anthracite prototype, which actually has prototype headlight cutouts in the body mold. That feature is actually cut out in the final casting release. You can see on the front of the car, there are two little holes where headlights would have been pretty neat there. But then just to highlight a couple of the castings behind it. So in the middle, column in the top in the red is the 2009 connect cars track legends international anthracite it was released as one of the last cars in the international exclusive series these are hyper rare he said they make chicanes look like riveted by comparison which is unbelievable so he said in 10 plus years of looking for one he's only ever seen one for sale once ever on an international website and it took months to coordinate the purchase and then in the middle row, the third from the top, the clear silver anthracite. This is the 2014 Max Steel 5-pack exclusive anthracite. He said this is another international exclusive model. This one came out of Mexico and also took a long time to find. It's another example of a car you won't find anywhere online, even if you know where to look. And then he has a bunch of premiums that are in storage and case examples. Um, he's, these are a bunch of his premiums. He's got cases that are completely full. There are a handful of sets he's still piecing together the last few pieces of. And he also has a massive red line collection. A bunch of them are in storage. This is an overview shot of a bunch of them. He's got about 400 cars in the collection. Um, several still packaged ones that you'll see in the next photo. So here are a bunch of the ones that are still in package. And then the last piece of course collection that we're gonna take a look at since we've been at this for over 45 minutes now, probably the longest video I've ever done on the channel. Um, something he found at Goodwill as a kid for $2 is this authentic, completely original lime green Olds 442. Um, red line collectors will know what that means, but he said, just know it's mega rare. I don't know anything about red line, so I will take his word for it. He said he found it for $2 at Goodwill as a kid and his true worth is well in the four figures range. So that is going to wrap it up for Corey's collection, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this massive variation haul. Um, it is absolutely out of this world. And a uh, huge, huge, huge shout out to Corey for letting us share this on the channel because he's put a ton of time and work into this collection and the way he set it up for me so that I could do this video for you guys. He absolutely crushed it as far as pictures, details, descriptions. He is the absolute man. Super cool guy, really great to work with and uh, definitely an absolute staple in this community. Every, every community needs a guy like Corey that just knows the ins and outs of all the die cast. So cool to learn new stuff every day about the variations, like, you know, painted base variations that came with uh, some of the factory sealed set cars. I had no idea that something like that even existed. I was like a painted vase what is that and i had to uh, look closely at the photos and i was like oh my gosh i can't believe that's even a thing but uh new variations pop up all the time i think he still finds stuff even to this day that's uh new and he adds it to the collection just slides it on in and uh, like i said anytime i come up with anything that's a little out of the ordinary i just send him a photo and let him do the rest he knows what he's doing but if any of you guys want to get your collections featured on the accelerators hub youtube channel all you got to do follow Corey's guide um take some clear photos of your collection shoot me an email my email is going to be down in the description of the video um send me a little background info on yourself you know how long you've been collecting you know maybe what's your favorite item in your collection so on and so forth just the little talking points that i can hit during the video and uh, i will slap it together and we will get you featured on the accelerator sub youtube channel but anyways guys that is going to wrap it up for this video so if you enjoyed be sure to smash the like button for me subscribe to the accelerator sub for more accelerators related content and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out guys